as you can see, this is um, particularly on a, on a YouTube uh, viewing. It really took off over the period of about two or three weeks. And we were having a significant amount of views and comments left, most of them negative, um, on, this, on this one issue. Um, the other absolutely critical piece in this is it's not just down to your control of the situation, it's down to what your competitors do about the situation as well. Um, some of you people in the room may not know Whitakers, it's a major um, chocolate uh, company in New Zealand where the palm oil issue was particularly strong. And they brought out TVCs and online ads doing a direct comparison between their chocolate block and the new look we dairy milk. So just as we were starting to feel like we were getting on top of the social media environment, a major competitor came out there and stuck their boots into us. Fair enough, it's competition. It's a, it's a tough marketplace, you know. But you know, always expect the unexpected from your competitor. Don't just think about what you're doing yourselves. I particularly like the message for this from this slide. There are no audiences for your crisis, only varying levels of participation. Now what that really means is that in the blink of an eye, somebody that has just been reactive and receiving the information that's put out there, in the blink of an eye, they can become a participant. Either for a, for a good reason, sharing a promotion, sharing your brand in a positive way, or if they choose to share the information regarding other issues. So it's very important with all of these very engaging and interactive media that you understand that you no longer have an audience, you have participants. Whether they're participating today or not, it's their choice as, as to whether they'd like that to change. And that leads us to the issues that then become uh, the, uh, the online community. What we found in this particular issue were that the detractors were silencing the, the promoters, the positive people. So, Roger mentioned at the start how much loved Cadbury has been and continues to be. But the majority of the people that wanted to get involved in a positive way were hounded down by the, the, the vocal minority that were the ones that were continuing to, per, to perpetuate the story uh, regarding palm oil, that wasn't the whole story about Capri. And recognising that becomes very important, and we'll show you why as we take you through the strategy of what we learned and then how, how the learnings were executed the next time a similar challenge was faced. We have a phrase we use, internet forensics investigation. It's a pretty cool phrase in so much as every time somebody does something in a social media environment, it goes through a computer. So the amount of data out there is considerable. You can tell from my grey hair I've been around, I haven't got a lot, but I've got enough. I've been around for a little while and I started in direct marketing a bit over 20 years ago. I'm not very active in terms of print and mail today, but the fundamentals of being able to measure, being able to test, and being able to follow through a thought process that is relevant for direct marketing is very relevant for internet marketing and specifically social media. So with regard to forensics investigation, it was essential to us in this situation that we find out who were the vocal people and we learned about them a little bit more. Graham before us was talking about demographics. Never lose sight of understanding who your audience is, who is doing the influencing and who is being influenced. We haven't got time today for me to explain exactly how that works, but the data is there if you know how to find it and you know how to use it. And then the third part is, are there fraudsters out there? Are there people reporting to be something they're not? In this situation, the answer was clearly yes. And I'll give you a very simple example. One of the most vocal people in the Facebook environment, or one of the most vocal accounts, let's say, had joined Facebook and set up this account only weeks before the, um, sorry, weeks before we found them, but well into this issue. On Facebook, they had one friend. On Facebook, they followed one group. That group was taking palm oil out of Capri. And they were very aggressive and very vitriolic. And we'll leave you all to make your own decisions about who might have set this up and why they may have done it. But clearly, no photos of family, no discussions with anyone else. So always be aware of fraudsters. But the question is how you find them. And that comes back to the forensics. Thanks, Rob. So through the analysis, 
the strategy starts to take shape. We find a large number of people that are basically uninformed. They want the truth, but they're not getting it because the vocal minority are out there spreading the word. The trolls are just wanting to cause trouble just because that's what they do on a Saturday night, I don't know. The fraudsters and the silent majority, similar to the uninformed, but in fact I didn't express the uninformed clearly enough because they tend to be people that are out there saying things but they just don't quite know what they're saying. And what they want to do is get the right information. So in the end, it leads us to one strategy, not 100 tactics. And this is a very important slide for us. It's a very simple concept, but what we regularly see are businesses and agencies sometimes saying, oh, quick, we've got to write here, we've got to get a Twitter account, let's say something up here, let's put a video up on YouTube. And so there are all these different tactics happening. Social media marketing and internet marketing is no different from any other marketing all of us in this room have learned. Set a clear strategy, understand your audience, as Graham was saying earlier, and execute the strategy utilising however many tactics, but don't start tactically, which is a common fault with social media. Thanks, Jeff. Um, just to reinforce the point um, Jeff just made, it was interesting working inside the, the business at this, at this time, the pressure we came under to do what I call knee-jerk tactical responses rather than to try and actually build the, build the information, suck out the evidence and come forward with a more coherent strategy. Um, our Wikipedia entry, our Cadbury Wikipedia entry was hacked um, and all sorts of fairly unpleasant things about the company was said. Um, we had a whole range of tactics being, being deployed really designed to sort of pour, pour fuel on, on, on the fire. And part of my role at this time was really to try and to take, despite the fire storm we were in, to get the business to step back and to be clear about actually what the one strategy was going to be moving forward. Because otherwise, there was a danger that we just going to completely lurch from one issue and one incident in the social media attack to the other without being actually clear about where we were trying to get to as a business. Um, let's be clear, we were pushing out throughout this process some fairly, I would say, overcomplicated messages about the sustainability of the palm oil we were sourcing. I have to say, it did not cut through one bit when you're up against <coughs> dead orangutans, deforestation videos, and the type of um, passion and fury that was being unleashed on the other side. So simple messaging is another key ingredient in this space. Um, 